Hi, this is Lady Lecture K, and this is a Dreams tutorial. Now, previously, uh, when you gave me questions and comments, um, I would make a Dr. Lex video, but there haven't been that many queries recently, uh, and therefore it's not really fair to keep storing these things up, uh, waiting, because people want answers to their questions a little bit quicker than that. So, um, Dr. Lex is probably uh, done for now. Um, I'm going to be making little videos as we go, as you make your comments. Um, there is another comment which I'm working on, which is um, for combo moves. I'm not having difficulty trying to find a method uh, that works well, um, so, but I am working on that one. Uh, but this is from HFC Gaming. Um, do you know how I would go about making two selectors function as one so that I can cycle through a list of 0 to 19 instead of 0 to 9? Right, I don't know what you're trying to make. Um, what I've got here is I've got a controller sensor which is linked to the up button. I'm going to assume it's a menu of some sort um, and you need to scroll through uh, each of the selections like this. And as you can see that's gone to 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 etc. up to 29 and then it goes back to zero again and through again. Uh, and you can see um, I've got two calls to action on the first two selectors. So um, I keep accidentally moving this. I don't want to move this. Um, uh, okay, so on number four there is a light that comes on and I'm not sure if it's 15. Yeah, 15, this light comes on. So as you can see, these two selectors, um, although all the selectors are running at the same time, um, these are not being activated unless the, the number is correct for that selector. Like so. So this is how it is done. Now, I did experiment with turning selectors on and off, but I found it was really easy to get them out of sync that way. So uh, what I've got is is they all run at the same time, but I have a node here that's going to indicate whether or not the actions of that um, selector should activate or not. Um, and these... Um, these work in turn and the way I've I've done this is with a counter so um, this is counting how many times you press on that up button uh, which will match up with um, the movement on this selector and um, as the counter counts up when it gets to the 10 um, it switches to a second counter which is for the second selector and then, then that counts up and then that swaps to the third counter and the third selector and so on and so forth. This is how you would link all them through. Now the reason I've done three and not two is because um, two is, 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 is a simple matter of just if this one or that one. Um, but once you get three in, you've got to start linking these things and you get these little tweaks that you need to do uh, when you get past two um, to make these things work. So I thought it was best to, to show you with three. It's just a matter of deleting this third one and making sure this one runs, um, turns on and resets this counter rather than this counter. Uh, if you just wanted the two. Well, I'll show you that in a minute. Anyway. How does it work? Right, so we have our selector, they start off at zero, and then each of these outputs um, are numbered. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, and I've got a number displayer that's linked to the active port of the, our first selector to display that number. As you can see, the number displayer, the power is actually coming from this node. This node here, zero to nine, is what you, uh, what I'm using as a power, if you like, for everything 
connected to this selector. And the, the way that this knows whether or not it's on or not is it looks at the counter to see if it's full. So if the counter is not full, then that means that this is an active selector. And I can use this wire to um, power on my number displayer and also power on my light. So what I've got for the light is now, if you, you would normally use a selector and you would wire it in like this directly. Um, for this method though, I need this little AND gate in here in between. So you put the wire from E into the AND gate, you put your action to your whatever your output is, and you also have a B input coming from this, which is our power saying, okay, naught to nine is active, and you check that uh, before you actually activate it. So um, although these numbers are being selected, um, it gets stopped at this point if the selector is not the, the one that we want at this particular moment. So this counter is set uh, to go up to 10. So once it's gone up to 10, so let's turn it on and try it. So once it's gone up to 10, like so, um, this counter fool does a few things. First of all, it now um, means that that not gate is no longer active, which means this is no longer active. This is now turned off. We've got the counter fool then goes into this AND gate and it checks to see if this is full and this is not full. If that is true, then it turns on this node which controls all of the AND gates and the number displayer for this selector. And this selector's number displayer has a little calculator between it and the active port to add 10 to the amount. So you'll go, instead of showing 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it will show 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, etc. And down it goes. So you can see that, that these are being controlled. And again, we've got another light with an AND gate doing exactly the same thing as it did up there. Right, if you look at the um, counter full here also, um, this is powering on our counter. It's also got a reset to make sure this starts at a zero. And then when this counter is full, so let's, let's fill that up. And you'll notice both these counters are coming from the uh, up button on our controller sensor. Exactly the same. Uh, so we'll fill it out. And now when this is full, we've got the same situation here. This not gate is no longer active. So this is no longer true. So this is no longer on. Uh, this is then activated. So we've got this is now being controlled. Now this 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 counters turned this one on up here. Um, and sorry, no, it hasn't. What am I talking about? This one here, it's really hard to tell. Um, it's coming from there. We go. It's coming from this one. Um, it's coming from th this counter. Once this counter is full, it's turning this on. Uh, but for for some reason, although this one doesn't do it. Um, when you push up, you get the right number and you start at zero. This one starts at one. We don't want that to happen. So we've got a counter, the full, also goes into a minus one. So we always start on a zero on this counter. And it's also when the counter is full on this one, it resets itself as well as resetting both these counters. Now, um, this counter does reset this one, but this is sort of like a fail safe just to make sure. So we got resets on the counters in both directions, just in case. Um, so there, the counter full when that not gate and these two counters are full and this one is not full, then this is the active node. Exactly the same as you had above. And there you go. So that's, that's how uh, you link up all of your selectors. And like I say, it'll get to 29 and then it will go back to zero again. It is a bit of a pain that it, trying to get it to go to a nice even number like 30 would require you put another selector in with just a single digit in. Um, 
uh, and then it's not going to go through the night. So it's not really going to work. Uh, you, it, it will take a little bit of uh, to get a number to the thirty is going to take a little bit of thinking through. But um, I'll just leave it at the not um, to twenty nine for now. So that's basically it. What it, so what we're doing is we're we're running all of our selectors, but we're not running the activities unless um, that certain conditions are met through these counters. So if you only want two, we'll delete that and that and that and that and that. And I think uh, we just need to work uh, that to there. And it should work. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Back to zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, back to zero. There we go. So what do you do if you uh, don't want the full um, selector? Let's say you want it to go from zero to 15. Okay, so remember that 15 is our sixth output on here. So 15 is F. So that's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, which is one, two, three, four, five, six spaces down from our selector. So first of all, we need to change our counter to a six. Then luckily we've already got an AND gate on our F slot. So we just use the result of that. We're wiring that in so that our first selector will go to J as soon as we're on. So that they're matching both of their last sockets. We're making this go to F like that which is six selectors and then on our selector up here we want to make sure that this always starts on A so when the counters fall we're going to wire that to A let's see if that works first of all one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 11 12 13 14 15 then we should go back to zero. We do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and back to zero again. There we go. So that's how you do it. You just have to make sure that you are you wire the final of this one to the final of of the of the next one. Um just to, to make sure that when it goes it, it's going to go back to the beginning and work its way through and also make sure that the counterfall of the previous selector starts the selector at A so you're not out of sync with each other there you go I'm going to put this up so you'll be able to um, access this, uh, this microchip and use it yourself uh, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in your dreams.